Hello everyone, welcome back to Having Fun Repairs. Part, this is part three of our uh, video series, Restoration of the, uh, what what is the model of this? Amp, uh, Trait, G80 XL guitar amplifier. Uh, when last we left off, we got the majority of our capacitors replaced. Because this is a full restoration video, uh, full restoration of this amplifier, uh, I want to take a look at several of the other components. Um, our dual channel op amps and our transistors and FETs and etc. Uh, any of them look uh, suspicious. I'll remove them out of the board, uh, test them on the mat with the known good, and if they appear to check okay, I'll put the old ones back in. But I uh, kind of want to address all that uh, and some other things. So, uh, apologies up front, this video seems a little bit disjointed. It's been filmed over, uh, over a month, to be honest. Bits and pieces here and there. Um, I actually have in, even though I might say I don't have them at the time, I actually have in the components I need to replace these uh, bipolar capacitors on the board as well. But, um, and we'll need to address these two 100K uh, potentiometers. Hopefully get that into this video too. Uh, but without further ado, let's... Uh, Let's get into this uh, next step of this uh, series and restoring this uh, this amplifier. Well, again, like as far as a restoration goes, when we talk about that, we're not talking about just fixing a problem on the board. We're going through and testing everything that we can test, or at least the things that I can think of to test, uh, and uh, trying to restore this to how it operated originally. Um, whereas a typical repair video is just that. You're looking for a problem and you try to fix that problem. Uh, sometimes when you repair something, uh, you might fix the problem, but you might not fix the underlying cause that created the problem. Uh, it's a part of the troubleshooting process. But anyways, I'm uh, going on a bit too much, so welcome back to the channel, and let's start moving into the next things we need to do. Now that we've got the bulk of these capacitors changed out, I kind of want to, I think that's going to, I don't think these diodes, now that this capacitor changed out, looking at a diagram more, uh, I don't think that they're bad. I think that this was just getting hot because of this one uh, cap being bad. Uh, you're going to get that uh, continuity and rise and you know how it was closed. And then start opening up the longer you left there because these are Zener diodes and they are providing <clears throat> a bit of rectification. Um, so I, I don't think that that is an issue. So this should solve the 16 volts. That should bring it back down to 15, I would think. But we still have um, a lot more amplification than what we should have. Uh, especially with our high end, you know, the more I think about how we were testing this, I, I, I feel like I've come up with a decent procedure for actually checking it in the future, but I want to figure out why this uh, far right one, what was it, at, uh, we we're again like 28 versus 17 or 18 or whatever it's supposed to be, 10, 10 dB more than what it should have been, and that is probably occurring because we have uh, some preamp problems so it's maybe a, maybe an op amp maybe our dual channel uh, amp um, maybe maybe some FET maybe a transistor now we've already looked at those two uh, 
uh, Darlington transistors, and those look perfectly fine. So I'm going. I believe it's going to be on preamp side of things. So how do we tackle this? We'll tackle it with the op amps first. Uh, it's just a simple check that uh, that you can do on these dual channel uh, operation amplifiers. Um, now this is by no means the best test. The best test would be to pop them into a breadboard and look at them on an oscope and see how they uh, can either invert or keep the look at the non-inverted and then invert the signal and take it take a look at that as well but something we can do and uh, I'll just show you on one and bring this over we'll zoom in a bit is we can go from uh, VCC negative to VCC positive so that should be pin 4 and pin 8 and we shouldn't see, and it should be up in the mega ohm range. It's gonna be kind of hard to get this all into the screen together. So uh, we'll start with this left hand. So pin four and pin eight should be up in the mega ohm range. I've got two there. And I've got one sitting here that I've tested out of circuit. Um, out of circuit, you're looking at 3.4 mega ohms. So to me, I think that's good. And the next thing that we can check is from our uh, VCC, or sorry, from our first, one, uh, first channel out at pin one to P7, uh, second channel out. Uh, Outside, we're up in a range of almost 2 to 35 mega ohm. Uh, but we're, anyways, I think uh, I think we should see mega ohms the same way on that. So P1 and P7. Thousand sixty-five kilo ohms. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Seven mega ohms. What about this guy? So this guy is at one hundred and twelve kilo ohms and. I don't know about that one. That seems odd to me. Now it could be because of how it is in circuit, but uh, I don't know. To me, that seems a bit doubtful. I would think that you would want to keep your channel one, channel two segregated in circuit. So we're going to mark that guy and remove him. Now I'm going to go to diode mode, and I'm going to check out these J. 112 in channel FETs. Uh, it's four of them, I think. Okay, yeah. So, six, seven. Reads like a diode. Let me swap it around again. And this way should be open. All right. So, positive on the gate will get us continuity negative on the gate it should be closed on the other two pins so that's j112 here goes another one closed i'll try to get this into a shot negative on gate positive on source positive on drain all right, now positive on gate, negative on source, negative on drain. So 
J112's measure fine. And then we got uh, some P channel FETs, J FETs uh, J176. There's one right here, one right here, and there's one all the way on the other side of the board. So they go drain gate source. So we're going to be checking from the center pin. Yep, negative on gate gives us continuity this way and that way. Now, center pin positive, no continuity, no continuity. Good. Got this one over here. So put positive on the gate, measure at the drain. Hmm, getting continuity. Same thing on that side. Looks like I got a short between drain and uh, source, which I shouldn't have. Yeah. So this one, no matter what is on the gate, uh, I'm getting continuity through there in diode mode. So we're going to remove that one again. Could just be because of house and circuit. Uh, it could be that it's also been latched. But uh, we'll remove it and pop in a new one. Okay, so we've got this to remove, that to remove and replace. And the last thing I want to check are some transistors. So just fast forwarding through the section a bit, I am in circuit testing of our 2N5087 uh, PNP, 2N5088 NPN, and 2N3403 NPN transistors. Uh, however, because they are in circuit, it's not really the best way to test these components. And I eventually decided to remove a few along with other components to test outside of circuit. And here in a second, you'll see me pick back up on that. Um, I've marked that FET and you tested out of circuit, it's measuring weird to me in circuit. I've marked these transistors as measuring weird in circuit, so we're going to take them out and test them. And if they're good out of circuit, we'll put them back in. Uh, this transistor was measuring weird in circuit and so was that one. So we have several things to take out and test. and. Um, take out a circuit and test and got all my known goods and packages from Mauser so we're good with the components and some of these were rather expensive these right here whoo man you want to talk about an expensive component that transistor and this transistor both of those guys are they're a bit pricey um, but anyways uh, we are restoring this thing as much as possible. But anyways, uh, that's enough waffling. I uh, will begin to take some things out and I think the first thing we'll start with is uh, this uh, dual channel operation amplifier right here.
Okay. Now this guy is out of circuit. Let's see if I can get my camera a little further down. There we go. All right, so no good one. BCC, BCC, bomb and dial check. Wonders. Acting weird. Eight. What is this giving me? Round eight. Now we need to go from. Channel 1 out, channel 2, 40 meg ohms. And we're at 30 meg ohms. So a little less, but it's not reading uh, 100 direct short anymore. Got 40 across from there. Open. Open. Open there. Open there. Open here. Open there. All right, now let me go this way. Open, open. Open, open. 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 So this reading very similar out of circuit. Just kind of want to go to the pins and see what I'm getting there. The pin one, pin two. So I'm looking at two and one once this is flipped over. All right, so we have no direct shorts to ground. Seems like we are measuring something is connecting these two leads together. I just don't know what. I'm going to have to look across the board. So I've traced around as much as I could, and to the best I can figure, uh, the series and parallel resistors and Capacitors we have here. That is just the measure of value between here. So I think it'd be safe to stick this op amp back in. And solder him back into the board. Or 
what I'll do is I'll put that one in my package and solder this new one in just in case if there's something weird going on in the board that makes it behave funny after it's in. ones I'll remove are these uh, what are these what are those two in five oh eight sevens we got three of them get these guys removed first and test them out on my bench These are PMP style transistors, 2N5087, meaning I need a low on the base in order for the uh, collector voltage to be amplified out the emitter. So our first test is going to be base to emitter. Now I'm going to put the and it should read emitter base collector emitter base collector for all three so i'm going to put the negative lead to the emitter and check between here and base and i should be fully open and i am Now when I reverse, 0 0.72, 0 0.71, Okay, now I'm going to go to from base to collector. And I'll keep the positive lead on the base and go to the collector. And I should remain open. And I do. I do. I do. Now let me reverse. And I see the same voltage drop of 0 0.72. Oh, point. 0.071 or whatever it was. Now we're going to do collector to emitter and I'm going to put my positive lead on the collector and my negative lead on the emitter.
Now what happens when I reverse it? Open. 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 Cool. So these transistors are actually good out of circuit. So I will throw them back in. those are back in we're going to take out this uh, J176 P channel that tested out a circuit as well Gone voltmeter out of dial mode and into resistance. And layout of J176 is drain gate source. We measure uh, based off of the gate. So I will do positive to gate, go to the drain, open, go to the source. Open, now I'll swap them around. Six mega ohm and six mega ohm. And just to verify that that is good. Got several spares sitting here. And they measure the same thing. So we will call that one good and stick it right back in to our equipment. that's out I think it's time to take out this uh, N33 or N3440 which is a NPN transistor 2N3440 more of the board Post is oriented on it. Okay, so rather than just repeating things that you you will see multiple times, the same type of testing of transistors and FES, I decided to just fast forward this section. I continued to test the rest of our transistors out of circuit uh, in our last FET, and then uh, ultimately decided to test around the board for a bit. Now, testing in circuit is one thing, you can make determinations, but it's best to test transistors out of circuit uh, because you could have uh, parallel resistors that allow for current to flow that can give you some erroneous readings while they're in circuit. Bets not so much, they primarily act like an on-off switch or a latch. Uh, however, again, depending on how they are in circuit, they could always be latched on or turned on like an on switch. 
Uh, so again, like I said, you know, sometimes it's just best to test out circuit versus in circuit. Now, as we pick up here in a second, I decided to test around the board uh, with other components. Uh, and ultimately found a very low resistant, low capacitive uh, capacitor that I wanted to test out of circuit as well, just to make sure that it was good. And that's where we will pick up on the end of this montage. Playing around on the board for a bit, just kind of wondering why, because I put this back in and tested it afterwards, and it went back to the same. And I was kind of concerned that there might be another something that's causing this to mess up. So with my multimeter and diode mode, I was checking all these what appears to be small inductors or potentially uh, non-polarized capacitors. But um, my multimeter in diode mode, positive to ground, you can see that traditionally they have a very specific reading. But with this one, this is the only one on a board like this, we have a Direct short to ground here, and it looks like we're still on ground on the other side, and it is on the ground plane on one lead, but it's on a different plane on the other. So just to verify that. Yeah, ground. All that's ground. It's most likely good, but I would like to Pull that out. I mean, there, and just uh, take a look at it. I think it's right here. All right, we'll do that. get underneath the microscope read the numbers off of there as uh, 102 expressed on it which is a 1 nanofarad cap and that's exactly 
what it is. So it's just such low capacitance that it's hardly uh, not really registering much on the uh, on the circuit board. I'll get that put back in off camera. Now we have our 2.2 microfarad 50 volt 50 volt rated um, bipolar capacitors. I think these are Nichicon. Pretty sure they are. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and get these into the board as well. A bag of 100 right now. these two 100k tensiometers. Now I have a, a few 100k uh, tensiometers myself. Uh, they're not necessarily the right type. The, uh, the wiper or the blade that's called the wiper or the sweep uh, is obviously different. Uh, you have a standoff on this one for your threading and then a long plastic uh, center piece. So if I turn this upside down and let me zoom in for a second, I might be able to tell. You definitely see the opening at the bottom. focus well enough but uh, you can see me moving it and then inside uh, against the back of this plate right here is your trace that those little wipers are making contact with I'm not sure this is something I can take apart and swap those components over if it's even worth it. But um, before I make a decision, because I don't mind destroying one of each, um, let me just get one out and well, I'll deconstruct it off camera and then come back. Okay, deconstruction has occurred. Here goes the newer potentiometer, and as much as I can tear down as components uh, taken apart. Here goes the old one, and unfortunately, this is not something that I will be able to swap pieces into. 
and let me zoom in and show you why. So, on the new one here, uh, in order to take out this uh, center hole, I would have to break it in here, and there would be no way of reattaching it. Okay? Now, not just that, but the Sweepers on the bottom are slightly different. And then the PCB is built slightly different as well. Whereas on this one, it can be fully disassembled, which is nice. But on this PCB, you have a raised area. You have your sweepers, and then you have a little notched uh, metal circle that makes the contact to this raised copper platform here, metallic platform here, going to that center hole. Uh, so definitely functionally different. And um, taking it apart, you can also see why this component has failed the way it has. Now the traces, the uh, this carbon track or whatever this is here, is definitely has signs of wear. But if you follow up the center pole, see right here, all this is burnt up like. Almost as this, if this uh, potentiometer is quite a bit of current. It's either that or it's a build up of carbon that's just collected down on the bottom of this. But either way, I'm not going to even cleaning this up, trust that this is going to continue to work as it uh, as if it was brand new. I'm just going to have to unfortunately put this uh, back housing back on. find a way to make these work on the new board. Although I will say, now that I got them back together, you definitely have a bit more repel repairability these potentiometers right here so long as you have a like for like so there is that it's kind of uh, rather nice but regardless uh, this guy is not going back in So I did a bit of a mock-up off camera, uh, seating this in here and putting it back in, you know, chassis and now a bit putting it back in this chassis here just to see what was usable. But, uh,
I can still clear the hole on the front of the chassis if it's soldered all the way down. But uh, the best clearance is when it's lifted at the same relative height of these. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to get a, a nut on to here. But the upper portion, this whole portion right here of our shaft protrudes out, so I'll still be able to get a knob on it. So I think that's, this is going to be doable. It's just going to have to be secured by solder and by the plastic knob, it will no longer have a retaining nut to, at the top. Not idea, not 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 an ideal situation, but uh, it's one I can live with. So let's, uh, let's get these this other one removed and, and get these soldered in. got the other one removed as well this one's it right here and both 100k pinchometers replaced uh, you can tell even with this one you build up a carbon see how dark it is on that bottom rung uh, center pin I don't know why it says bottom rung but uh, highly suspect tells me that quite a bit of current came those potentiometers. But, um, yeah. I think that's going to do it for all the components that we're going to replace on the amplifier PCB. Um, so what's next? Uh, I'm going to call it quits for this video. In the next one, we will work on cleaning up our nuts and balls, getting corrosion, taking care of all the uh, chassis that it sits in, as well as cleaning up the speaker housing uh, and everything else, uh, as well as the little bit of mesh that was pulled out from the top of the speaker cover and the amplifier housing. Uh, and basically tidying things up and getting it all back together. We'll probably do a few more tests now that all the components have been replaced. And uh, I should wrap things up in, in the next video series so at least you know what to expect. But uh, if you've enjoyed following along in this restoration, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, you know, drop some comments down in doobly doo. And subscribe to this channel. It's never required, but I'm always going to give that little shout out. Either way, thank you for watching.